So you love Text Expander. I love Text Expander. The way you describe using it is exactly how I use it, like creating templates, creating like for my emails. Um, If you're like text expand, what is that? Uh, text expander is is a, a way to program your computer to do the work for you of of writing <laughs> words. Uh, my, you know, I I think about it. I also am a, a teacher. I teach at a local university here, and and I the best example that I come up with is is when it comes time to to start entering comments that I've entered before. You know, there are things that you say over and over and over again, little snippets of text, and I can pre-program my computer through Text Expander to take these little shortcuts and expand them into much longer, uh, much more verbose. Uh, uh, paragraphs, sentences, pages of, of text to help me automate the, the, the grading process, which is very, very helpful. And Text Expander is so wildly customizable and scriptable, and you can do such amazing things with it that when you, when you pull back the, the curtains just a little bit, you discover that uh, there, there's a whole lot you, you still have yet to learn. Uh, but it's, it's one of those tools that, like, unlike so many, it's useful right out of the gate. Uh, you start seeing benefits. Now, Nikki, I know that on, on the episode that you guys were talking about it, um, you were, I think, trying to sort of grasp the, the gist of it. And you were saying, I, I, I think I can do it. Have you tried it? No. <laughs> no, no. See, those episodes are, are interesting because those episodes interesting, are interesting, she says. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. They, they are kind of titled as tech episodes, which is where Pete, you know, certainly um, hosts those episodes. <laughs> so I sit and I listen and I do my best to try to follow along. And, uh, and I certainly do now better understand the concept of text expander because of, of how he explained it and what you guys just talked about. So I definitely see where I could use it, especially on some of these emails that, you know, it's pretty much the same response that you're giving out. I can definitely see a use. Uh, but no, to be completely honest, no, I haven't used it yet. Someday. We, we, it's we get, okay. It's okay. Yeah. We got a comment Someday. in the uh, in the li in the live feed. Uh, Michael says that listened to you at Kinzer Right podcast this morning on the drive to work and get to end the day watching them chat with my other podcaster. That's, oh, that's awesome. fantastic. Um, <laughs> I love that. That's that awesome. is heartwarming. Thanks, Michael. I know. That's great. So. You know, one of the favorite ways that I use Text Expander um, is so you know, we if you're in any, especially if you're in any service industry where you are uh, replying to people, it's you know, how often do we reinvent the wheel like a hundred times, if not more? You know, and it, it occurred to me several years ago. I'm like, you know, what? I like first of all, I hate writing. Like, I, I writing is painful for me. It is like it is not something that has ever come easy. To me. It's why you podcast. That's exactly mm -hmm. why I podcast, right? Because I have the, the the gift of gab. I can talk all day long, sometimes too much, um, but it works <laughs> as a podcaster, right? <laughs> so <laughs> this is it. This is the the only career that really <laughs> celebrates that gift. That's it. You and me both, man. Tell me. So so as I was thinking about, you know, I kind of replied to a lot of the same kinds of emails. So it first started with, I was uh, um, just capturing all those emails that I wrote in a Word document. And I was like, man, I hate how slow it is to open Word. Then I started putting them just in a in a, a, a Evernote document. And I was like, well, then I have to do this copy and paste and use working memory to hold on to what I'm trying to copy and paste. And then I kept hearing about this whole text expander thing. And I'm like, you know, I'm going to spend like two weeks and just really like learn how to how to do this. And so now what I do, and I first actually did it as, because I, I have a private Facebook group, and, um, and I screen everybody uh, uh, that is in the group. Um, and if you are thinking about moderating a, a group, I wouldn't necessarily recommend doing it this way because we have like 392 people in our queue right now. And I sincerely apologize wow. to all of you who are still waiting. Um, yeah. yeah, it's uh, <laughs> okay. So side, sidebars, it's, it's uh, Adderall has worn off at this point. So <laughs> we're, we're done. <laughs> Put a fork in it. <laughs> the train of thought has left the station. Can I still catch it? I might be able to. Text, text expander. I'm going to bring you back. Text expander. We, we need a non ADHD or in every conversation. <laughs> Nikki's a referee. Know, right? Yeah. So what I started doing is I re realized I had this sort of same idea of this sequence of communications 
that I would use. Um, so the first time someone uh, uh, that I want to reach out to somebody on Messenger, on Facebook Messenger, after they've requested to be in the group, is basically the same sort of hello and little sort of intro, right? So I created a little snippet code that was FB for Facebook and then the number one because it's the first message I'm sending to somebody on Facebook, okay? right? Then my next, I'd wait for that response and then I figured that, oh, almost always this is how I reply to that response, which then becomes FB2 for the second response. And then if I go, if there's a period of time where I haven't heard from that person, I'll do FB0. That means they have not responded to me at all, right? So how many times, how many times do you, uh, do you use a block of text before you decide this would be a good text expander snippet? It sort of depends. Sometimes I, because I, I think I'm in the mindset of I'm always looking for uh, how to be more efficient with with my work. Um, so probably not very long. I'm always thinking on every task that I do, can I systemize this, yeah. right? And that has been how I've been able to really maximize my productivity is through always thinking about how do I how do I systemize uh, everything I work. Which so in the in the moment that task takes longer. But the what where the gold is sort of you get to cash in on it is so it took me five times longer to systemize this task that I'm pretty sure I'm going to do something really similar again. And now I've done this task 20 times, but now it only takes me three seconds to execute that task. Right. So, yeah, and yeah, that's right. Um, and one of my, my favorite features on it with that I use with with emails is the ability to create um, like multiple choice sort of templates so it's so okay. I'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna sort of uh, that, go ahead go ahead that was mine that is you know i'd been using text expander for years when i learned that you could do that and i blew up like that was amazing so what i'll do you is that kind of red right now because of the red light behind you like, i can change that yeah. i can change that on a dime <laughs> and for, for the people who are just listening on the the podcast pete has this yeah. really cool color changing kind of hippie looking light um that you know it's it's uh it changes colors yeah. <laughs> very beatnik <laughs> so the, the way i do is i'll i'll have an email response it'll be dear and then i'll put in you know insert uh, short field right so i put a person's name and then, uh, right, thank you for your email regarding, right? And so then if it's a, let's say I get a, an email from a, a parent or uh, or it can be about yourself. So I'll create every time I see another like uh, thing that could go there, I then go back and edit that text expander field. So it's like I create these drop down menus all the time. It's like, so I, I do the hard thinking kind of once and then I just each time I update that system and it's just like my my executive functioning is always saying thank you, Eric, for for thinking yeah. about doing this because now I don't yeah. have to think so hard. That's totally. Funny. I do the same thing. I mean, we did a whole show on this one. I, this was another one where I think where Nikki might might have not liked me all that much, but oh, it was I a whole. I always sh- like you, but you can tell I'm a lot more <laughs> silent on those shows. I'm like, uh huh, yeah. This was this was possibly <laughs> my favorite tech episode, the digital episode that we've ever done, which was on uh, uh, which was on adapting uh, workflow to create automated checklists in the To Do app, uh, and that was another one that blew my mind because you know when you're producing a podcast, there are a bunch of tasks that go in line with producing. Something. Wait, which which one do you use? Well, I use to do to do like number two do, yeah, yeah. which is I it's delightful and I love supporting independent independent developers. You know, I just love the whole idea. What you say? It, it creates automated. Well, so are you familiar with workflow on the iPad? You know what I so I couldn't get it to work and I didn't persist. But like, That's, but there this is, is the, that was my look of shame. I know. I, 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 look it's, of shame. It's, it's uh, okay. This is a shame free zone. ADHD rewired is a shame free place. We're, we're a little sensitive it, well, to the shame. Oh, room. All right. All right. No shame. Guilt no me shame. into it. That's fine. But guilt. No shame. Yeah. There's a guilt, look of guilt. I'll take that. Because <laughs> uh, there was an ahead. app that I used to use and like became, was a, became a power user on it called uh, um, Launchpad, where it is. Yeah. It, yeah. It's, yeah. These, these macros where you can yep. sort of control all these different things um, externally from your iPad. It was amazing. And then, like, I, my iPad stopped talking to my computer, and I could not get 
the fix and it was so frustrating. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's frustrating. I, you know, I use, I'm, I'm trying to get better at, at workflow. I have a number of workflows. It's an app that allows you to script across, you know, across applications on the iPad. And, and for me, uh, you know, when you have a, say I have a podcast and I know it's going to take me 25 tasks. And every time I produce an episode, it's the same 25 tasks. Uh, it, you know, I, I have to know where I am in the process on each show and I can hit with a button. I can hit this, you know, workflow, uh, button and it just says, okay, what's the title of the show? I type that in. What date is the show going to go live? And I enter that and I hit go and it enters all 25 tasks and it does it like backdating from the date the show has to go live. So I know that I need to prepare the Google Docs rundown seven days Ooh. before that show goes live. I know that I need to post it to, you know, Facebook one day before the show goes, you know, that that's sort of a, of a thing, the, the dating aspect, the, the relative dating. from yes, that, uh, that, that it, sounds amazing. Changed everything for me, everything. So I, I want to, uh, I want to uh, pull this up. I want to share with you sort of part of my workflow, how I do it. And I've been, you know, all these good intentions that we have. Um, I I have a a paid, gosh, ADHD supports the economy. You know, one unused membership and late fee at a time, right? So I have <laughs> I have I have a paid membership that I have not been using uh, to Process Street. Are you familiar with that one? I have it's I am process not familiar dot with that. st. So you can basically run these like playlists of processes that you, know, you can create videos and have pictures. So you can basically create use create like a training. Uh, a manual and then you can see you can look to see how it, is that workflow been uh, has it been gone through but i'm a very visual and non not very linear thinker so i'm going to uh, i'm going to do a, a screen share here so for the live viewers and for, and for youtube you're able to see sort of how i do how i sort of organize my workflow around the podcast and for uh, and for the um for people just listening on the podcast go to uh Go to whatever episode this ends up being. Go to erictibbers.com slash whatever episode number this is. And you'll you'll find this episode so you can see the, the, uh, the, the screen share of this. So let me pull up the screen share. Um, don't be alarmed by what you are about to see because it's a little overwhelming at first. So this is a program. Uh, this is a website called Real Time Board. Have you ever used this? No. Okay. It's not coming. Oh, there we go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay. Mind mapping. Okay, so here this starts with um, everything that happens from like when my guest schedules, right? So sort of that, that yep. workflow. Um, mm -hmm. then, then sort of what happens to how, how a bill becomes a law. So what for the, the podcast listener, so I have this big green sort of square and a bunch of sticky notes on it with icons and with a bunch of arrows. It's basically like a flow chart, right? Then I huh. Scroll down on this big digital whiteboard. And that's what real time board is. It's a big, big digital yeah. whiteboard, right? So then I have, all right, so the guest schedules the interview and I, t I just have all the steps sort of written out. Then I have preparing for the interview. And then so here it's a, uh, it's, again, it's on this green little rectangle. Um, so I have to open the meeting details. I copy the bio from the calendar and, and move it into Dropbox. And so I really spell out with a lot of pictures because I like pictures that just m my, makes my brain happy, right? Um, and, uh, and then, so I go to the, the pre-recording checklist and I actually skipped this step with you guys because you guys are podcasters and I figured I probably didn't need to, to do this with you. <laughs> so hopefully I'm going to have no regrets. It's, the, it's early yet. Yes. So I'll, I'll zoom in a little bit so, uh, yeah. people can see. So it's everything from like turning the speakers off to make sure I actually have this, check to see if I have enough space in my flash card. And as I'm, as I say that, I'm like, let me check to make sure I have enough space in my flash card. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Um, so all these different things, you know, um, I didn't explain what happens if we, if there was a, uh, an issue with, if something needs to be interrupted, um, you have dogs, you know, all this. Stuff. So it's all the, um, all the, the pre-step. And then I take it, this is where it gets really fun. I have the, the file naming sort of protocols. And here's my favorite part of this is sort of the workflow between, uh, my, my editor and, and myself. So, um, you know, there's the, the, the picture of me, which is in a, uh, you know, a the emoji um, uh, character. It's like, I love yeah. that. That's all class, right? right? Like, I love if, it. if I yeah. like it, it goes this way. If not, it goes this <laughs> way, right? <laughs> and the, pro the process of doing this really helped me streamline my mm -hmm. whole workflow. You know, and so this actually took me, the whole process of this took me about two or three weeks of, of working on it. 
right? I no, I thought about doing this for about 125 episodes, and then I finally did it. <laughs> As you do. Right? And, you know, and so it's like the 99%. Like, I got the workflow down, and then I was planning on, on importing it into Process Street. Um, that stuff still hasn't happened yet. Um, I've also been saying on the podcast that I'm going to hire a virtual assistant for at least the last year, and I still haven't done that so enough about me let's talk about you guys <laughs> check out the rest of this episode at erictivers.com slash 157 see nikki and pete help me get organized and uh find out why i shouldn't be trusted with a stable gun 